bro. I'm getting seasick just watching this, bro. I have a riddle for y'all. What is the black man's most greatest natural enemy? And I'll give you a hint, it's not black women. Contrary to popular belief, it's not black women. Surprisingly, they are crazy. The answer is deep water. I do not do deep water. Now, we all know how horribly and cripplingly afraid of deep water and void I am. So without further ado, we are here to check out five biggest tsunami waves in history good luck to us because i am going to need it if there is one natural disaster i don't think anybody watching this video would want to experience it has to be a tsunami as we saw in 2004 and again in 2011 the amount of destruction caused by these no, events is no. far too great coastal cities that sat for decades untouched get washed away with little notice they are truly a terrifying force of nature However, throughout history, there have been a few tsunami waves that are so big, it's almost hard to comprehend. Waves that were as tall as skyscrapers and destroyed everything in their path. From the United States to Japan, here are the five tallest tsunami waves in all of history. Tsunamis are typically caused by massive underwater earthquakes as they displace large amounts of water. Believe it or not, though, there is another type of tsunami that has nothing to do with earthquakes or any other geological events. This is called a mega tsunami, and it occurs when a large amount of water displacement is caused by a sudden addition of material into a body of water. Most of the time, these mega tsunamis occur because of a sudden landslide or the collapse of an iceberg. However, one event in world history not only produced a mega tsunami, but had an effect on the entire planet. 66 million years ago, an asteroid that was anywhere between 6.8 to 50.3 miles in diameter hit in the Yucatan Peninsula, leaving behind what is known as the Chicxulub Impact Crater. It was a massive asteroid strike that produced a mega tsunami that was over 100 meters high and unlike anything that has ever been seen since. It was so tall and moved so fast that some scientists believe that the wave washed as far inland as Chicago, Montana, or even Canada. But in this case, it wasn't the wave that did the most damage. An asteroid strike on this scale was enough to wipe out entire species of animals from the planet. Even striking the water was like striking land. Regardless though, it was enough to cause a massive environmental change all across the planet, bringing about the ice age and likely the end of the dinosaurs. Damn. Japan is one of the most geologically active spots on planet Earth. Located on the border of three tectonic plates and situated within the infamous Ring of Fire, the country is home to a number of active volcanoes. Among them is Mount Unzen, an active volcanic group of several overlapping stratovolcanoes near the city of Shimabara, Nagasaki on the island of Kyushu, which is Japan's southernmost main island. It has been active as of 1990, when it awoke after a couple of hundred years. Then, in 1991, an eruption caused a pyroclastic flow that killed 43 Damn. people. However, the fiery mountain is most well known for the destruction it caused in 1792. That year, the area had been recording a number of earthquakes when, all of a sudden, one of the lava domes collapsed into the ocean, triggering a mega tsunami that took the lives of over 14,000 people and is still considered to be Japan's worst volcanic-related disaster. One thing that made this tsunami especially deadly was the fact that it struck the Higo province on the other side of the Ariake Bay. Then, it bounced back and hit Shimabara again. The wave was said to have reached a height of 330 feet, or 100 meters, hey. making it capable of reaching miles inland and wiping out anything in its path. Out of all of the fatalities, around 5,000 are thought to have been from the landslide, around 5,000 from the tsunami going across the bay, and the remainder from when the tsunami returned. Damn! Damn! 
There are few geological events in recorded history that saw the destructive force as that of the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. It was the Earth's largest terrestrial landslide in historical times, a result of a restless volcano and its uniquely violent eruption. The most defining thing of this eruption was the total collapse of the northern slope, leading to an immense pyroclastic flow. However, something else came out of this collapse that was disastrous in its own right. When the side of the mountain fell, it plowed directly into Spirit Lake, which was a short distance from the base of the volcano. As the huge column of rock and dirt crashed into the lake, it produced a tsunami that measured 860 feet or 260 meters above the lake level. The lake also grew in size, nearly doubling from 1,300 acres to roughly 2,200 acres. Inland tsunamis like this are one of the rarest natural disasters on Earth. This massive wall of water traveled for quite a ways, knocking down trees and any structures that were in the way. However, even with 860 feet of water moving at an incredible rate, it would eventually be overtaken by the fiery cloud of ash that spewed out of the Damn, mountain. It spewing this ass. mixture of water and ash created some of the most devastating mud flows, clogging rivers and leaving a disgusting sludge behind that would take months to solidify. Over time, Spirit Lake was able to fill back up and now has a level of around 3,406 feet that is constantly monitored and maintained. But it took over 20 years for the lake to get to the condition that it's currently in. As you can see by the disaster of Spirit Lake, inland tsunamis can spell certain doom for anyone unlucky enough to be in its path when it strikes. However, this wasn't the first inland tsunami to have been recorded. Just 17 years earlier in Italy, another inland tsunami did some serious damage in areas around a reservoir located about 100 kilometers north of Venice. Just after World War II, Italy decided to undertake a number of construction projects, including the building of Genoa's fateful Mirandi Bridge, which was a hydroelectric dam. However, prior to the dam's construction, there were numerous warnings issued that the mountain above it, Monte Toc, was unstable. As it was being built, locals reported continual tremors and landslides. However, the operators ignored the danger signs. They decided, as a safety measure, to lower the water level in the reservoir behind the dam. It was a mistake that would cost them dearly. On October 9, 1963, a massive landslide sent rocks, trees, and earth plummeting into the reservoir below. The impact sent a huge wave of water shooting 250 meters above the dam, just before sweeping down the valley below and destroying every village in its path. The tsunami displaced the air with a force that was supposedly more powerful than an atomic bomb. Witness accounts were hard to come by, though, since most of the people in the line of impact died, around 80% of them in a handful of villages along the valley floor. Some 350 families were wiped out altogether. Hey. Investigations later determined the landslide to be triggered by the lowering of the water level along with heavy rainfall. The immense weight of the water and earth could no longer be supported by the mountain. It is hard to imagine tsunamis that are as tall as some of the ones we've already mentioned. They're nearly as tall as football fields are long, if not even bigger. But that makes a person wonder, is it possible for a tsunami to reach into the thousands of feet? Exactly how much force would it take for something like this to happen? Few people believe that it is even possible. However, the largest tsunami ever recorded would definitely put that question to rest. It happened in 1958 at Latuya Bay, which is a quiet fjord in Alaska. On a calm and cool July night, a massive tremor struck the area and triggered around 30.6 million cubic meters of rock to fall 3,000 feet into the Gilbert Inlet, causing a torrent of displaced water to shoot skyward and form a monstrous wave. And when we say monstrous, we mean that the wave was 1,720 feet, or roughly 524 meters high. As it rushed through the fjord, it removed all of the trees and vegetation along the slopes. 
millions of trees were uprooted and swept away by the wave. Miraculously though, this wave only claimed five lives. This is simply because it is an extremely sparsely populated area. It proves just how deadly tsunamis can be when triggered by landslides. This particular landslide was extremely dangerous not only because of how much land actually broke free, but the height from which it did. There has never been anything to even come close since then. We have talked about how powerful tsunamis are plenty of times before. But now, we have a scale to be able to see exactly how big they can become. Our planet's oceans are responsible for some of the most severe weather on Earth. We just rarely see it. Given how vast they are, it makes sense that most of the time, there's nobody around to experience it. Once in a while though, a ship travels into some bad weather and captures it all on film. Cruise ships, cargo ships, oil rigs, they all get to bear witness to the waves that we don't see on land, and it gives you a true appreciation of the power of Mother Nature. From a ship caught in a hurricane to a chemical tanker in rough seas, here are five monster waves that were caught on camera. Damn. There are tens of thousands of ships sailing the oceans at any given moment, both large and small. The vast majority of the time, conditions are fine. Calm winds, smooth waters, and sunny skies. It's also not that big of a deal for captains to have to go through bad weather. However, there is one thing that will definitely challenge the courage of even the most seasoned ship's captain, and that's the knowledge that you may have to sail through hurricane conditions. In this video, shot by Big Wave Master 1 in the North Sea, we get a glimpse into what it's like to sail through hurricane conditions. The ship, an emergency response and rescue vehicle, is built for weathering these waves and will sail in this weather to rescue any helpless vessels caught in a storm. Swell after swell pound the ship's hull. I don't know about any of you, but I don't think I'd want to get caught in this. As mentioned, the ship's built to withstand these conditions, and the captain and crew are trained to stay composed in the midst of being tossed around by the unrelenting seas. No doubt, though, the conditions must make things on board pretty uncomfortable, Nick. but it's what comes with the job. As for the rest of us, we will have to rely on footage like this to tell the tale. The North Sea is one of the most volatile bodies of water anywhere on Earth. Here, the warm waters from the Gulf Stream collide with near-Arctic conditions from the Northern Atlantic and Scandinavian countries. These can produce some incredibly fierce weather conditions, which also lead to very turbulent seas. But it is also an area that is rich with oil and other natural resources. So, there are various oil rigs dotted throughout the sea, constantly drilling and braving these conditions. What people tend to forget is that these oil rigs, which are as large and sometimes larger than ships, actually float, although they are tethered to the ocean floor. So, although they are like floating towns, they're also at the mercy of the pounding waves. On January 10th, 2015, the oil rig Borgholm Dolphin found itself in the middle of a huge storm. The video shows the large platform listing from side to side as the ocean rises and oh, falls. Hell no. Even though the platform itself sits around 60 feet above the water, the spray from the pounding waves actually reaches up onto the deck. Oh hell no. Nope, can't be me. Never. Absolutely not.
shorten this up. Way too long staring at the same thing. Concealed beneath the water, the oil rig has a few turbines that help keep it in the same position, preventing the wind and tides from moving it out of place. Large ballast tanks help store or purge water to keep it perfectly balanced. As you can see though, they can only do so much when faced with massive waves. We'd like to say that our next video would take us to a different part of the world, but we're staying in the North Sea yet again. Are you seeing a pattern here? When we said that the North Sea has some of the most volatile weather in the world, we weren't exaggerating. Not only was this video also taken in the North Sea, it was once again taken from the deck of an emergency response and rescue vehicle as they patrol the waters for any vessels that are in distress. Bro, I'm getting seasick just watching this, bro. This video was shot during a three-day patrol searching for distressed ships in the area. To make things more difficult, the ship was doing its dangerous patrol in the middle of January, which is one of the coldest months of the year. Although not common in these areas, it is still possible for sea spray to freeze onto the edge of ships, making them top-heavy and prone to tipping over. Oh, hell. Luckily, in this situation, the temperature was just warm enough to keep that from happening. When talking about monster waves, how could we leave out tsunamis? Tsunamis start far out at sea after water has been displaced by a large earthquake. Very few people have ever witnessed what these tsunamis look like when they're that far out at sea. However, a camera on a Japanese Coast Guard ship in March of 2011 caught the action. As the ship is sailing, it is clear to see that the horizon looks slightly off. The sea has risen quite high in the distance. If you look closely at the left, it almost appears that there is a small mountain of water. Upon seeing this, the captain knew that he had absolutely no recourse other than to sail right for it and ride over the wave. Oh, hell no! Oh! Obviously, this wave was nothing the ship couldn't handle. To the captain, it was just another swell to sail over. But that isn't the point. This wave would ultimately be responsible for billions of dollars in damages on the mainland, not to mention the loss of thousands of lives. It is one of the only times where we get to see the origins of one of the most cataclysmic events in modern history. All of that just from that little swell of water? That's wild. The North Sea isn't the only place where severe weather and monster waves exist. Back in April of 2021, sailors on board a chemical tanker watched helplessly as massive waves pounded their ship out in the Atlantic Ocean. The video was filmed by Andre M and gives a great insight into just the type of conditions these sailors experience.
Oh, hell no! Wave after wave pounded the vessel, sending water and mist onto the deck. In the background, you can hear the wind whipping and ship creaking as it gets tossed around. Watching this, I can't help but imagine what it would have been like traversing this many years ago. Back when ships were much smaller and made of wood, it would have been one hell of a terrifying experience. Choppy seas are not anything new to ship captains. Things are made a lot easier when you have a bigger ship. Some of the largest ships sailing the world's oceans today are cargo ships, but even with their massive sizes, they aren't exactly immune to problems from rough waters and large waves. Captains still have to know how to properly deal with them and sail through them. Should the ship be in the wrong position, it could really damage the cargo and even pose a risk to the ship itself. Just off the coasts of France and Spain lies the Bay of Biscay. On this particular day, a fully loaded cargo ship was on a voyage to transport its payload when it came upon some bad weather. When this video starts, things are already in a pretty bad state. The ship has found itself being thrown about by waves and rough seas. However, the main source of the danger wasn't in the weather or the rough seas. It was in how the ship was loaded. Oh my God. Oh, hell no. Weight distribution is very important when it comes to ship safety. When done properly, it can actually help protect a ship from listing or rocking during bad weather. However, when done improperly, it can actually pose a real threat to the ship, even to the point of sinking. It is a rare occurrence, but there have been plenty of close calls. Large waves at sea are much more of a danger than we typically consider. While they may not pose much of a danger to us on the land, they definitely help us to appreciate the real power that our planet can display. Basically, what they're trying to say is, damn, nature, you scary. But yo, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe to Mobile Asimus HD. Twist.